Hello and welcome to... Oh, no, not again. Starting off the news this week, the European Space Agency has signed a contract which will eventually see a UK satellite go to the moon in 2024, a first for the UK. ESA is not going to be responsible for simply funding the project, but instead have purchased part of the relay capacity of the satellite. In addition, the satellite will not be flying to the moon on an ESA rocket, but instead will be using a US-built rocket. This relay satellite will help the ESA in its future lunar missions by relaying data from the Moon to Earth, similar to how relay satellites around Mars send data back and forth between Earth and rovers on its surface. This new contract comes as the new Director General of ESA calls for further investment into European space research, saying that if you're not a space power, you cannot be a superpower. In other news, I'll just quickly mention that the SpaceX Inspiration4 mission was successful and the so-called amateur astronauts have splashed down safely after their three-day trip to space. I went through more details of this mission last week, so I won't go into detail again now. Also in the news this week is a fantastic paper describing a new kind of enantiornithine. These Mesozoic avians were an incredibly successful and widespread group, commonly considered to have been the first major worldwide radiation of birds. Many fossils of these animals have been discovered over the years, and this new discovery, from an early Cretaceous formation in Liaoning Province, China, is an absolutely spectacular find, preserving the almost complete skeleton and feathers of a new species named Yuanchalvis compsosaura. Interestingly, this enantiornithine actually displays a unique tail feather morphology that has never been seen in enantiornithines before, with a reciprocal fan as well as a very long pair of feather plumes in the centre of this fan that resembles the pintails of certain modern birds. Seeing as this is not a very aerodynamic condition, it suggested that this is a case of sexual selection, with the long and energetically costly tail feathers indicating the fitness of an individual to a potential mate. As such, the study highlights the significance of the role that sexual selection played in the evolution of plumage in dinosaurs, even at this early stage. And finally for this week's news is the description of the first ever identified footprints from baby straight-tusked elephants. These prints were discovered at an upper Pleistocene site in Spain that also preserves a variety of other animal prints that appear to have trampled across this surface in a relatively short period of time. Some of these tracks have therefore been attributed to the straight-tusked elephant, Paleoloxodon antiquus, and more specifically, to newborns. Amazingly, a glimpse of prehistoric social behaviour can be seen at this site, with juvenile Paleoloxodon tracks converging with those of adults, presumably females, preserving instances of parental care in these animals. Not a surprise considering the social structure of modern elephants. This locality, an ancient interdune pond environment, was apparently an important site where herds of these elephants gathered. It was possibly a reproductive habitat too, with some tracks of adult males identified here. But among the other trackways found at this site were those of Neanderthals, with the paper therefore hypothesising that these ancient people would come to this site to scavenge on and potentially even hunt these elephants, in all likelihood probably targeting the less dangerous juveniles. It's a fascinating snapshot of ancient life at this time, and again shows the importance of trace fossils in the study of prehistoric behaviour. Well, that's it for this week. I do hope you enjoyed 7 Days of Science, and we'll see you on Sunday.